tell us a little bit about how you got into the fashion industry and how did you find your love for fashion and garment making? Well, as a kid, I always loved fashion. LRG, Diamond, Crooks and Castles, there were these very expressive clothing brands like Obey, mm -hmm. you know, just these artists that were making names as brands. And especially LRG, I love that those types of brands would allow other artists this platform to explore. And it was very free thinking, very expansive, very challenging the norm. And that was, that was a big, influence in everything I was doing. I mm. should have been sponsored by the club. Right, <laughs> that, at this point. With the, with, the amount like... that, with the amount that I was wearing it, I should have been sponsored. But it really set this precedent for me. You know, earlier on, I wasn't like, I always want to be a fashion designer. But I always loved art. And I loved how it was this creative expression that you could wear anywhere. Mm -hmm. the, the art traveled with you. Yes. That was super important for me. So, and. It kind of created these, um, it's like, you know, you look at someone and their appearance and it tells you something about them. So mm -hmm. it was just that other outlet to say like, hey, I want to go deeper. I want to show you what I'm thinking, let alone yeah. just like how I'm, you know, presenting myself. Literally wearing it on your shirt. <laughs> yeah. So I really loved that particular aspect of fashion um, from the artistic side. And then I went to St. Rose at... Uh, for art education mm -hmm. and I didn't really know what I wanted to do for my concentration. You know, they make you pick a concentration in painting, drawing, whatever. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the other mediums, they felt very daunting to me. It felt like I would look at a painting and know it was going like, to take me whoa. 14 hours, <laughs> 20, I'm like 20 hours from now. I'm gonna be and done. I'm not even getting paid. <laughs> and, and you're making one, Yeah. you know, so I, Got my uh, my advisor, uh, who was my art history teacher. She got me into the one screen printing class that was like impossible to get into because it was a prereq for uh, graphic designers, and that started everything. So once I got to like the advanced level two, I'll never forget it. I saw this girl Lauren Kennedy uh, print on a T-shirt one day for her senior thesis. She was doing a clothing line. Mm -hmm. She ended up getting picked up by Abercrombie. Wow. But yeah, so she was definitely in the know. And I was like, I walked up one day like, how'd you do that? And it was just a special water-based ink. And we use a lot of traditional um, art mediums at St. Rose. It's mm -hmm. all fine arts there. So like everything was oil-based. You print oil on a shirt, it's going to turn into a flat brick. Yep. But the water-based just, Gave it some It'll, definition. Yeah, and it just allowed it to just be a part of the shirt. So here I am in the studios with now 18 screens <laughs> and um, filling the drying racks with clothing. Oh and my God. it progressed heavily from there. I just, I tried it and I never stopped. And so that, that was the original. And I just started printing truth down the side of shirts and I was just giving everyone whatever color they wanted. Yeah. It was like, what? it was a two color print. The shirt I, dealer at the college. Yeah. <laughs> and they did not like that. They just, I can only imagine. <laughs> they, they, it was a problem for their like fine arts mentality mm -hmm. and they perceived it as commercial art. Yeah, and, like that's still art, you know? It's art where you can make money too. It was a paradox of, you know, being this artist and they're trying to train you to be this artist in this contemporary world, mm -hmm. but you don't want me to do the one thing that is almost mainstream at this point. Yeah. But they uh, they saw it as challenging their ideals. So, but you still were able to come out with Made in Truth, which is the company that you have. Yeah. What is Made in Truth, and what's the what's the meaning behind the name? Actually, I want to know the meaning yeah. behind the name. Yeah. Well, truth has always been a part of everything that mm -hmm. I've done. Um, Poetry at a young age, I always signed my name as Truth. Any music I created from me developing, uh, you know, an affinity for poetry, always was uh, labeling myself as Truth. In college, I would hide the word Truth in all my etchings and woodcuts <laughs> and printmaking. So it was oh, this like game. Signature. It was like this game for my friends to like find the truth in my art. Oh, and I like that. So that just continued to play off and be this like. Where's Waldo of sorts? Yeah. And then, um, so 
We were trying to figure out how to take a design and turn it into a sharp and refined logo. And we're like, just looking at clothes and, and just like looking at everything in the room. At this point, we were just like dead in the water. And um, I was like looking at the tag on the t-shirt and it said something like, you know, made in China or something like that. And uh, I was like, no, yeah, made in truth. Made and in everyone truth. went, oh. <laughs> it's like that aha and moment, you know? It was a very aha oh, moment. Oh, the show. Intended, you know? <laughs> nice plug for the show. So, oh, so it, yeah, just that, once I said it, it was like, it there is, you go. It is Made in that Truth. That light bulb. So what are some services that Made in mm -hmm. Truth does? Like, what, what, do you, what do you do? Made in Truth, I think, above all, as I reflect on it now, is really about connecting people to people. Mm. It's allowing people to have an opportunity to express themselves, whatever they're passionate about, whatever they're looking to pursue, whatever they're looking to service for other people. So Made in Truth, for me was this connection to self and it was this you know as a child and, and you're using the word truth to represent yourself there's just such an allegory behind the you mm -hmm. know the, the usual happenings of like identity and figuring out who you are and yes. what you want to be and not even just what you want to be just like who you want to be and I spent a lot of time reflecting on that and I think it helped me to continue to reinvent myself, continue to find me in places that I felt most suited and aligned. And I think for me, it's really important to help people find that journey themselves. So it's not like you're just selling or printing or designing clothes, there's a deeper meaning behind it. Yes, it's absolutely. It's very artistic. It's not just your regular screen printing and garment making business. Correct, yeah, I just, I, I truly, I truly have a passion for showing people the value that they don't necessarily see in themselves right away. Mm. And it's, it's always been there. So now I just feel like I'm finding this avenue to, to create it through the brand. And it's helped countless people develop their own ideas, understand themselves more. And mm -hmm. then in return, you know, we always are finding out more about ourselves through that process. So. Oh, I love that. Very yeah. symbiotic for everybody. Very yeah. great for everyone too. <laughs> Service is not only the customer, but also yourself and grows everyone in that yeah. situation. So being a business owner and an artist, what are some of the challenges that you find with owning Made in Truth? Or just running a business in general? Well, it's being your own accountability, mm -hmm. which always becomes the hardest part for any artist that has such an expansive set of ideas <laughs> yeah. and endless projects that they may not be finishing. <laughs> but it's understanding what your strengths are and really not being scared to identify what your weaknesses are. Mm. The only way you can do it is if you understand those weaknesses because it's how long do you want to play this game? You know, how long do we want to be stuck within ourselves and not asking for help, you know? So it's finding those people who can support the areas in which you don't feel as strong and allowing that to really, you know, let you focus on the things that make you shine. Oh, I love that. It's a very powerful message for artists who are also trying to start their own business and really try to use their art as a way to support themselves financially. Yeah. Well, thank yeah, you, that's... Eugene. Well, thank you for coming today and thank you for talking to me and I appreciate so it and I appreciate you.